Hello, and welcome to Andrew Broussard Watercolors. Today, we're gonna do a fast and loose, toneless watercolor landscape painting. Usually I set some sort of restrictions, uh, experiments, where maybe we'll play with a certain palette, we'll play with certain tools, um, we'll approach different ways. This one, I just wanna have fun. It's Monday afternoon after work, the end of the month, is almost here on Friday I'll go through the channel and talk about everything that I did for this month and then see what I missed what I wanted to do and then come up with a plan for the following month and also put a post on YouTube for anybody to comment what they would like to see I'll try to get around to doing it uh, somebody I think just recently commented uh, capturing light in watercolor. So I'm going to attempt those things and um, yeah, hopefully that'll happen next month, but I'll talk about that all Friday. Today is just about painting and having fun. So materials, we have a quarter sheet of Stonehenge Aqua. I just saturated it with the large Ron Ranson Hake brush. It is 100% um, cotton. 140 pound cold press, and I'm using the medium hake brush. And this has been used for quite some time, so it's really um, bristly and old, and it's fantastic. All right, no restrictions on pigment or color. We'll just take it as it goes. This here is raw sienna. You know what, let's grab some light red oxide. And we'll let the scene paint itself. This is a oil painting technique that is shown by YouTubers and painters Stuart Davies and Dennis Sheehan. I believe David Usher does it as well. Um, I haven't given a shout out to David Usher in a while and he's a fantastic fella. And what it consists of is mixing your pigments, your oils, with a medium, making it kind of very watery, applying it to a gessoed masonite type surface, smooth surface, and just pushing pigment around and lifting, wiping back and forth and creating texture. And I've adopted that to watercolor. I'm not saying I'm the only person that's done this. I'm sure that there's other people. Grabbing some uh, burnt umber But it's a really fun technique. It's amazing what it can produce. It lets you learn about your pigments. It lets you learn about water concentration. And it lets you just loosen up. Sometimes it's very easy to get tight and restricted in regards to art. Um, paper towel will lift the pigment out lift the water up as well. But you can go right back in with the Hake brush or any large brush and add right back in and add moisture as well. Two days ago I put up a video, um, or was it yesterday? It was um, a toy camera photography that I had done, 35 millimeter. And I set up a little dark room in the bathroom. Let's grab some yellow ochre. We're just playing. And did some dark room prints and just did a quick film talking about it. And I was telling my friend uh, Chris about it, my really good friend. I've known him since middle school. I thought it was elementary school, but he said that we didn't go to the same elementary school. But anyway, I was talking to him and I was telling him about that video where it was a toy camera and I was just very um, kind of vague with what I had used. Like, I wasn't specific about the film that I used. I was very relaxed with the development of the film. and. 
pretty relaxed with the paper that I used and the printing. And the purpose of me telling this story is that I had done darkroom printing in college. I never did it at home. I'm going to grab some burnt umber. And doing videos like that and approach, approaching in that fashion, there's a term that gets used um, called gatekeeping, where sometimes things are made unnecessarily difficult and it's made to, I don't know, sometimes the people are just kind of showing off and um, a wonderment and uh, maybe it costs hundreds, hundreds of dollars and years of practice. I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue. But in all seriousness, the setting up a dark room again and using a toy camera was relatively easy. And hopefully things like that show you all watching that it's very easy to pick up a watercolor brush and start painting. It's very easy to pick up a camera and start doing photography. Um, you know, it depends on how far you want to get into it. Pick up a pencil and draw. Go and buy some flowers and plant them for the season. You know, I'm sure you have to water them. But do those plants, and <laughs> let me know if I'm wrong in the comments, do those plants need that very, very specific soil, or can you get away with some of them? I know orchids are very, um, you have to be really careful with orchids growing them, but I can't imagine it'd be to the point of stress. Yeah, Hammy. Yeah, we're talking about making art accessible to everybody. What do you think, Hammy? Any, any input? Yeah, I agree. Hammy is such a sweet cat. Grab some um, umber again. So, looks like I'm creating a tunnel type scene. Hammy. And we're gonna have trees on either side. I just added some texture into it. We'll have the light come through. And I'm just using the paper towel. And I have some um, scraping tools that were made by YouTube. Uh, YouTuber, and he sent them to me. Mr. Um, Megzamami is his YouTube handle. I'm going to use those to scrape in. You can use a card, um, the rounded edge, the sharp edge, everything on a card works great. Back of a brush. Just experiment and have fun. You don't need a hundred dollar brush to paint. Let's grab the silver black velvet, the number one rigger. I'm gonna go wet and wet, add some background trees and trunks. I like this brand brush, but if it's out of your price range, I think it's about a $12 brush. There's plenty of brushes you can use. I find that the one place that I don't want to um, hold any punches is uh, the paper itself. And for me, the paper is important because of the quantity of water that I use, the back and forth 
that I use with a paper towel and it could just really hold up to it. But find what works for you. I'm gonna grab some Payne's Gray. Um, pretty weak on the palette with that. We must have used it up last time. Grab this and darken up the sides. So this paper is quarter sheet. It's 11 by 15. And if it was to be displayed, it'd be under a, um, it'd be 16 by 20 would be the outer dimensions of the mat. And the inner cut would probably be about 10 and a half by 13 and a half. So, you would lose some of the edge, but personally, I don't like leaving that white edge there for a few reasons. It throws me off uh, tonally with other things. It helps me create the scene. And if you want to adjust the mat slightly, that helps too. Having a little bit extra wiggle room. I used to like to um, tape the edges and tape my paper down. It's something that I just completely avoid now. I might use it with a pen and ink sketch with studies like that. It adds a really nice border um, within the mat itself. But with watercolor, matting, uh, taping down the edge, since I paint wet and wet and everything gets soaked and starts to buckle, that taped area doesn't receive the water and that just causes huge issues for me. One tape that has been recommended quite a bit though, if you are looking for tape, is the frog tape. That's supposed to be really, really good. Do a little opening here, block off the shadow here. Okay, using a lot of light red oxide, this one. Let's get a little bit of foliage. And we'll bring some trees closer at a later stage. up having a big tree here I think so I'm just gonna mark it I think we'll have some foliage and stuff down here there we go ultramarine blue until the light red oxide Let's uh, scrape. Here's the rounded edge of a card. The rounded edge, or any rounded edge, will push the pigment out the way, and you'll get more of a wider mark. If you use the sharp edge, Sometimes it backfills. We may be past the point of backfilling though, which is a shame. The backfill adds a really nice, uh, kind of just total contrast. All right, number one rigor again. You can see how this is drying quite a bit. We do have some areas of pigment that are wet. Oh, and of course you are welcome to follow along with any of these videos and you have my express permission to sign your name to anything that you do when you follow along with us and, um, and sell it. I want you guys to succeed 
have fun, have money for art supplies, etc. If you want to support this channel, simply liking and subscribing really helps out. Also commenting um, questions, anything like that helps um, the channel grow and I really enjoy the people that I'm meeting through YouTube. If you want to support financially for art supplies, etc., I have the Patreon and uh, various donation links down below. I think I might actually have to order more paper soon, so that would be very helpful. Okay, so adding some depth in the trees here. gray, foliage, bring a little bit of that brush effect over for overgrowth, and I have the paper towel pull out texture as well. Just be careful of the stamping effect, meaning uh, the repeated pattern that could take place. Same thing with a hake brush. I picked up so many different brushes that I wanted to um, play around with and explore. I think we got two or three in this month. Oh, and um, the scraping tools that I had mentioned, uh, Mr. Meg Zamami was talking about maybe having a raffle giveaway with these. So let me know down below if you'd be interested in something like that. So they're very cool and unique. But I will say, and nothing against him, it felt great cutting up a credit card. I'm just saying. <laughs> One of the best feelings in the world. All right. I'm not even gonna do any drawing off yet. I'm gonna switch to the number four uh, rigger, silver black velvet reason I'm doing so is that it just holds more pigment for me in one go and sometimes it's just easier to throw trees in. This is a mixture of umber and mainly Payne's Gray. I wonder if we should do a really kind of detailed foreground tree, kind of thicker oak on the edge of the water. You know, we have so many oaks down here, but I don't know if they grow right on the edge of water. I know we have ones called water oaks, but I don't know why. I'll have to ask Matthew Clemens that. He's one of the admins, I admin with him on the Ron Ranson Disciple Facebook page. So if you like painting in this style, there are plenty of people on it that do that. And we have a wide range of people, you know, from amateurs, beginners, first time ever painting, to experienced painters. And everybody is very warm, welcoming. And we heavily moderate in the sense of making sure people aren't being butts to each other. But honestly, that really never happens. It's, which I'm probably jinxing us by saying that. But it's been really great lately or just since the beginning. Uh, the number one. Anyway, so I mentioned Matthew Clemens. 
he's an arborist and he might know about oaks on the edge. But honestly, just paint what makes you happy. And it's wet and wet, so I could grab some raw sienna and feed that in. I think at the end, I was talking about having a tree branch foliage here. See if I can start getting that in place. So we have burnt umber, we have ultramarine, and we have Payne's gray. And a broken branch. Unfortunately, it might be a little too close to where an edge of a mat would sit, or where I'll crop the photo when I post it. I don't like the way that is coming out. So we can just subtract it. And I can grab some pigment and go right back into it. All right, there we go. And it's gonna have a shadow, darker side, and we'll come back in later on with darker pigment. Create a little bit of foliage off of it. This kind of sets the scene offset a little bit rather than making it too symmetrical. Look at that little branches. All right. Give them some darker trees. Let's grab some raw sienna and Payne's gray. I spent a lot of time on that side of the painting. Usually I try to work the whole thing at once. I feel like we need some Payne's Gray for the darker aspects. You know what? I have some McCracken Black. This is a mixture of seven pigments made by Daniel Smith by a Mr. McCracken, the artist. He, I believe, uses it for hyper-realistic watercolor painting inspired by, I think, the Dutch painters of the 16th and 17th century. And it is absolutely beautiful work. Something that I can't imagine the hours and the effort that goes into it. And such a cool last name, McCracken. I'm grabbing that as a little bit of black. what's left and a little bit of Payne's gray. Yeah, Hammy. What's up, dude? I'll be done in a bit. I'll go hang out. Last night, I started watching uh, Queen's Gambit on Netflix. I think it's been out for like probably a year or two now. And my friend Bill has mentioned it quite a few times. And I figured I would watch it. So 
I'm checking it out, and it's good. I don't know how many episodes there are. I think it's just one mini series. Uh, I think I mentioned my friend Chris earlier, yeah. And Payne's gray, darkening, breaking that division there, with the shadow. And me and him play board games online against each other. He's up in New York. I'm down here in Louisiana. And we've been playing Go is one of the games. And we had played chess, and every so often, like once in a blue moon, I'll play chess, but just never really have gotten quite into it because it's always seemed such a game that you really had to study and spend time and read books and watch Hammy. What you doing, bud? <laughs> He's right at the art table on top of the trash can, poking his head up, lifting the edge. So you might see a little bit of Hammy right there. <laughs> so silly. <laughs> um, anyway, I think chess is definitely something you dedicate your your life to, or a lot of time to. Very in depth hobby, which I don't fault anybody who wants to do that. You know, go for it if that's what you want to do. Do it. I just personally was never able to do that. Hammy, <laughs> what you doing? This is ridiculous. Every video is just ham centered. All right, just bringing out foliage around that flow ground. Let's see. I'm going to grab that tool, get a few lines scraped in. Since I paint flat, I, um, oh, we have light glare there. I'm sorry. I just forget about that. Anyway, since I paint flat, Sometimes I have to stand up to really see the whole picture. It has its pros and its cons. Uh, find out what works for you. I'll do oils upright. Uh, watercolor, since I'm going so wet and wet, for me it kind of pours down the middle and I'm not really the biggest fan of that uh, motion. I think I might do some foreground trees. Let's pause, we'll do a dry off and we'll see how it looks. All right, it's relatively dry, slightly damp, but what I want to do now, I made the executive decision that there is going to be a slight experiment. I know I said I wasn't going to experiment, but I'm going to put out some of the McCracken black and I'm going to play with that as a black accent. If you're following along, you can, of course, grab any pigment you want. Um, you can mix your dark from ultramarine and uh, burnt umber. This is just me out of curiosity to see how it goes. You can use lamp black, etc. When I read the little blurb for this tube of paint. It had talked about how it's a neutral black, slightly granulating, and you can mix a little bit of a warm color in to push in one direction, mix a little bit of cool color to push it in the other direction. So kind of just go back and forth with it. I wonder if that would kind of equate it to a neutral tint type usage. But here, I'm just using it as a, the darkest value.
And one thing that you just want to be prepared for and watch out for and look for with pigments and paints is when using them at what stage they might start lightening up, what time they might get dark. Um, we're in the kind of dry brush stage right now. So we'll see what happens with it. Just kind of almost drawing with it. And one of our painting buddies, Colin, him and his wife been under the weather so I hope they feel better. The reason I mention them is lately whenever I start playing around with a lot of uh, twigs and branches I refer to Colin and um, the effort that he's been making and his in that regard. do a dry off in a moment and we'll see how much if anything we got out of that okay pause for a dry off all right I'm not sure how well it shows up on camera but the black I'm just tracing it along so you could see where it was here there there it, it really stands out. It's like, I guess like using black gouache. So I don't know if it's the pigment uh, load, how much there is in it or what, but that's fantastic. So very happy that we did that. I think that at this point, we'll call the painting done. We'll sign it and then I'll sign off. I hope you enjoyed. I'll upload this to YouTube and it'll be up on the Patreon. I'll also put a time-lapse version of it. Let me know if you guys are enjoying the time lapses. Sometimes I release them at the same time, other times I have to space them out because of the whole YouTube algorithm and stuff. I'll sign it with Platinum Carbon Ink. I can't find a uh, non-brush pen. Sign right here. This is a Noodler's Boston Safety Fountain Pen where the nib resides within the ink. And my friend picked it up once and opened it up. And <laughs> if you don't have it out, you pour ink everywhere. Okay, I hope you had fun and I will talk to y'all soon. Have a great day. Bye.